This will be a little bit different video than what you're used to on this channel. Uh, I'm actually gonna make a video about making kombucha. Uh, we've been making it for a while as a family and since my wife started making it almost two years ago, I have actually not had a cold since then. I've never even had the sniffles. It's like this, uh, it's keeping me incredibly healthy. And what's nice is the little SCOBY, uh, let me just show you it. It's like the living organism that's in here that actually kind of, um, ferments the tea for you. So full disclosure, I know it's pretty gross looking, uh, but at the same time, it's always growing and eventually it splits. And so uh, my friends end up getting the splits off the kombucha if they wanna start making it. And then we always have to explain to them how to make kombucha. So I figured I'm just gonna make a YouTube video and uh, hopefully it'll help my friends and hopefully it'll be a really easy way for anyone else out on the internet. They can come to this and uh, find a really easy recipe on how to make a six bottle batch of kombucha. So this process actually takes 14 days and it's gonna be a two day process for this video. And then it actually uh, takes 11 days for the uh, SCOBY to work its magic. But uh, step one, super simple, check it out. We actually just have three ingredients here for step one, 14 cups of water. I already have 11 in here, so this is my last three. So that's our 14 cups of water, uh, one cup of sugar, and eight tea bags. So we just gotta get our water boiling. For the tea, you do need to use black tea, and we actually use decaffeinated. Either way, it works, it's both good. Okay, we are boiling. So what we're gonna do is uh, just pour in our sugar. Stir that all in just to get it dissolved. And then we'll just uh, put in our tea. I like to steep them just a little bit, just to make sure we get them started. And we'll turn off our heat, cover it up. And that's it for the night. Uh, that's all you do on the first day. Uh, that tea has to be completely cool before you do the next step. So I'll show you the rest. It'll seem like just a second from now, but it's actually be the next morning. So it is the next morning. i uh, show you step two in the process here. So this time you're gonna need, I would say, about a cup of fruit, uh, probably about four tablespoons of ginger, all of your bottles, and then something to uh, filter out, something to funnel into the bottles, and uh, Elizabeth uses a chopstick. I'll show you how that works. So first we gotta get the fruit and ginger in the bottles. It's a quarter cup in each bottle, so let's change it to a cup and a half of fruit. Next is the ginger. Okay, so this is Elizabeth's favorite part. So now you gotta take the, uh, take the SCOBY out of your tea. Now this is the tea that you would have made 11 days ago. So this has been in here uh, fermenting with the original SCOBY. You're gonna take two cups out uh, just to um, put in your next batch, kind of like a starter for the next batch, and we just fill up our bottles. So Elizabeth's just sending it through the strainer and the funnel, just filling up every bottle with the tea from 11 days ago. So it's pretty simple. Now you'll notice she's not filling all the way to the top. You do need to leave a little bit of headspace here because this, uh, this will become pressurized over the next couple weeks. And most of the time we have just a little bit of extra tea. So Elizabeth just takes that, uh, puts it into a cup, and then we actually have a second SCOBY, so she just pours it in with that one. The SCOBY will grow every time you do this process, so eventually it just, it gains layers and layers and layers, and eventually it'll split in half. And so when it does, you can start yourself a second batch so that you always have, you know, a, a backup in case something would happen to your first one, uh, or you can just give it to a friend or if you have chickens, uh, chickens will totally eat it as well. So you can give it to your chickens. So then you gotta wash your bottle up really good to prepare for the, uh, the fresh tea. Elizabeth's telling me it's a jar, not a bottle. It's a large jar. Now we're gonna take this tea that we brewed up last night, nice and dry on the inside. Clean hands, hopefully. Then our SCOBY and our starter tea go back in as well. 
Yum. Starter tea is very important, don't forget that. That already has the good bacteria, and so that'll now start to ferment. Uh, the SCOBY will begin to ferment all that sugar out of the tea, transform it into our next batch of kombucha. So now you have your backup SCOBY that's fed and well. We have now six bottles of kombucha uh, ready to ferment on the countertop. And then we have our next batch ready to go. So those bottles will just sit on the counter for the next three days, uh, and then you just put them in the fridge. This one's from our last batch, but they can stay in the fridge for up to a month and they will keep totally fine. Some people like to filter it out again before they drink it, uh, you know, get all the fruit and ginger out of there. I like to just keep it in there. So good, healthy for your body. Like I said, I haven't had a cold once uh, since we started doing this, almost, almost two years now. It's been great. Totally suggest it. It's a lot easier than you think. And um, yeah, if you just get your get your wife to do it, it's so, so simple. <laughs> Whatever you're not gonna drink for the day, you can put right back in the fridge, uh, no big deal. I try to drink about half a bottle a day because that will, uh, that will make sure that 11 days from now when the next batch is ready, I've drank the uh, six bottles. A couple other quick notes. The uh, SCOBYs, you want to make sure they stay out of direct sunlight. Uh, if they're in direct sunlight, they can actually, you can actually kill it, so you don't want to, don't want to do that. Uh, the darker, the better. We keep ours just right on the countertop, though, um, just out of the, the direct sun, and it's been fine. The other thing is it does have to be relatively warm as well. We ran into some issues uh, last winter. Uh, this wall is right on the outside of our house. We had the SCOBY right on the wall, and it just was not... Uh, was not looking very healthy, so we ended up moving it away from that wall and just popped right back to health, and uh, that's been fine too. If you're looking for places to get equipment, uh, we just get these uh, large glass jars at Walmart. Very easy to find there. They're around $15 a piece. These glass bottles we just get right off of Amazon. I'll put those links in the description here as well. Amazon also sells SCOBYs now, so I'll put a link to those in the description. So if you don't have a friend that make, is making kombucha, then you can uh, you can be the friend that starts it all. And then when your splits, you can spread it around your, your group of friends. You can really just use any large glass jar that you can find. If you have a large pickle jar or something like that, it'll work. Your SCOBY will actually just grow to expand in whatever jar that you give it. So uh, we have these larger jars. They've worked really well. They're easier to clean, I think, because they have the, the big wide top, but um, you can use whatever you got. And obviously you can make larger or smaller batches depending on how much you think that you could drink. For us, six bottles has worked just perfect. Did I miss anything? probably. <laughs> so we're going to need a kombucha update video at some point or? Uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. I think we captured yeah, it. This. I think we captured it all. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments down below and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that might come up. And yeah, that's it. Have fun. Enjoy the kombucha. Hope it works well for you. We'll see you in the next one.